Good evening, I'm Timon Bradley. And I'm Dana Rebick, in for Jackie Bang. Just hours from now, the United Center will be filled with thousands of people for the Democratic National Convention. Timon is there live tonight. Timon, what is it like being inside that building, knowing what is coming in the morning? It's a lot of excitement here. Lots of sound checks and videos playing tonight, Dana, because it's go time. A big honor for the city of Big Shoulders. Chicago leaders are now responsible for making sure everyone has a good time and that the city remains safe. Just as the Republicans did in Milwaukee last month, Democrats will spend four days celebrating their party, platform, and nominee. Vice President Kamala Harris landed in Chicago a little over an hour ago, greeting her on the tarmac, Mayor Brandon Johnson. Harris is now the Democratic standard bearer, having already officially been confirmed as the presidential candidate. Earlier today, speaking with reporters in Pennsylvania, Harris previewed her speech. Essentially, it's much of what you've probably heard me talk about before in terms of just what I believe to be the promise of America and the fact that we're all in this. And um, there's obviously a lot at stake, but there's also a lot to feel good about in terms of the future of our country. Harris, trying to become the first woman president, will close out the convention Thursday night with primetime remarks. Her running mate, Governor Tim Walls, speaks Wednesday. For Governor J.B. Pritzker, this is a dream come true. Pritzker, who was vetted as a possible running mate for Harris, for a time hoped to star Wednesday in the VP speaking slot. Instead, he addresses the convention on Tuesday. During a sit-down on Friday, Pritzker told us about winning the hosting duties. All eyes on Chicago, Governor. Are you ready? Very excited for this, and I think the city is ready. The excitement level is very high. The electricity, I think, among Democrats for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Um, I am so excited. And, you know, we've worked at this for a couple of years now, first to win the convention for Chicago, and then starting back in April of 23 to get ready for this moment. This is a, it's a long process. And we were competing against three great cities, Houston, Atlanta, New York. So, uh, you know, making the case for Chicago, I knew I could do that. I do that every day, uh, making the case for Illinois, as I do. Uh, and then I, I think every time I saw President Biden, and I saw him quite a lot, I would start out shaking his hand and saying to him, now we're going to have the convention in Chicago, right? And, you know, he would laugh after the second or third time because he understood I was not going to let up on this. Across the city this week, there's going to be one heck of a party scene. Pritzker has booked an A-list artist to perform at a premier concert venue. We've got John Legend performing at a really great event on Tuesday night. I get to speak in prime time earlier on Tuesday. And then Barack Obama is, I think, one of the big featured speakers that night. So right after that, we're going to have this great event at the Salt Shed, celebrating what happened that, that night and also the couple of days ahead when we're going to finally have Kamala Harris officially as our presidential nominee. The party is well underway across the city. We got an exclusive look inside the Democratic Party of Illinois welcome reception tonight, where officials are building excitement for the week ahead. They're hoping this 26th convention held in Chicago is also an historic one. We will make sure that we start the path of being able to say those words that we all want to say. Madam President! Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton and House Speaker Emanuel Chris Welch, among those mingling with other top Democrats tonight. While this week is all about the business of the presidential convention, it's also a time for Illinois Democrats to show off what they've accomplished with control of the governor's mansion and the state house. State party chair Lisa Hernandez credits Governor Pritzker with making the land of Lincoln a progressive stronghold, pointing to bills protecting reproductive rights. Despite Illinois' status as a solid blue state, Hernandez says the party is still working to expand its base. We're already um, uh, organizing, mobilizing for November election. We have our coordinated campaign in place right now. And we're just uh, making sure and encouraging folks, hey, come on board and help out. Our freedom is, is, in, is at stake. If you want to save your freedom, participate, and let, let's get uh, Harris and Waltz to the finish line. 
Also in the spotlight this week, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson. This is by far the biggest test he's faced. He's dealing with security, protests, and demands from Democratic heavy hitters. Johnson's also tasked with making sure all Chicagoans benefit from the convention. On Friday, we met the mayor at the Duplex, a black-owned restaurant in Logan Square. Where would you tell Kamala Harris to eat when she gets here? Oh, my gosh. So many choices. Well, we got we to start off on the west side of Chicago first. So um, we'll send her to Soleil um, in North Lawndale. It's a black-owned business there, black woman who's hiring individuals who are returning um, from jail and incarceration. Uh, there's Truth, another black-owned uh, business on the south side of Chicago. Uh, my God, Virtue. Uncle Remus on the west side, right? Um, kitchen and cocktails. Uh, there are so many different places to eat. You know, I, I hope she's able to, you know, get, a, get her steps in because you come to Chicago, uh, you're gonna eat very well. Working with the Secret Service, Johnson and Chicago police are implementing a plan to keep everyone safe and they say respect demonstrators' right to protest. What's your message to potential bad actors, people who or, or, or going to start violence or, or, or cause trouble? There's no place for it. Not in our political discourse. No place for it. Protecting the fundamental right to protest is a hallmark of our democracy. In fact, I don't exist without protest. If I could be so audacious, we don't exist without protest. From our ability to, to vote, to, um, to ensuring that equal protection under the law. And so that's important. But what I've also said was that we have to have um, a safe, well-protected demonstration. Protecting the right of the First Amendment also includes protecting the individuals who are actually expressing um, their First Amendment right. That is paramount, and their voices will be heard. We've you know, made um, uh, staging available for them, um, amplification for those stages with microphones, porter potties, and anything else that individuals need. But the most important thing is that we're ready. A quick peek at the schedule coming up tomorrow. It is President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden's night. Also speaking this week, second gentleman Doug Emhoff, Barack and Michelle Obama, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and House Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries. Also on that final night, Republican Adam Kinzinger will speak, a source confirms to WGN News. He's a former congressman from Illinois and a fierce Trump critic. Those are just some of the headliners this week.